All right, peeps. Welcome. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to peeps all, from all around the globe, <clears throat> wherever you are. Today, actually, we're streaming um, to LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, and just let me, you know, so those who, uh, those of you who may be joining us for uh, for the first time, um, this, basically, this show features purpose-led leaders who are making an impact through their work. Um, and stick around till the end, and I promise you that you'll walk away with at least one, if not more practical, yet scrumptious takeaways from each of these live sessions, like an ice cream sundae topped with heavy whipped cream, melted dark chocolate, and a dash of gold dust. But most importantly, if you turn up live, you'll get a chance to ask each guest questions that are bugging you like an itch that can't be scratched. Now, today's topic for this live is how to become indispensable through empowering copywriting. And my today's guest is known for having a flair for words. Russell Brunson calls him his secret weapon. He's the emperor of words, an impactful copywriter, and a purpose-led leader. So would you please put your virtual hands together to welcome my fantabulous guest, Lee Rowley. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And Amber, thank you for that absolutely fantastic introduction. You nailed it, and and I, I love the praise and you know, all that good <laughs> stuff. So thank you. It's very good to be here. It, well, I'm really excited to have you here, Lee. Now I'm just going to quickly. Uh, look over that we were, were successful in going live on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is the only platform which plays up a little bit uh, when going live. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, we are. Um, other platforms don't give as much trouble. All right. So, so we're going to start this off um, by this first segment is called the quick fire round. Are you ready to rock, rumble and roll, Lee? Absolutely. Awesome. All right. So. Question number one, what's your go-to order at your favorite hometown restaurant? Wow. Well, you know what? We just moved here a week ago. Uh, so this may not be entirely fair, but in a little <laughs> place, hole in the wall place in this little bumbly burg with one stoplight, it is called Mama Rini's, and they make a pepperoni and jalapeno pizza that will smack you around. <laughs> it is just that good. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's the one where they like you know they put the pepperoni on top so it kind of curls and it gets yeah. a little grease puddle. In the, yeah, oh I'm my sure, god, I'm terrible sure. for the, terrible for the uh, the heart, but it tastes great going down. <laughs> I'm sure anybody listening to it is, uh, uh, will start salivating now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is the last show you binge watched? Billions. Uh, oh, started yes. watching it for a client. Uh, in the financial industry space, and uh, he he recommended that I watch this show to get uh, a sense of, uh, of of how the higher higher ups in his organization work. And I got hooked on it, and my, my wife and I watched all five episodes. Yeah. That we're anxiously awaiting more. Oh wow! So please, if, right. if there's not going to be any more, please don't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Imagine there's a zombie apocalypse. Who's your squad, and why? Yeah. No. I just never knew what to do with this question. Well, you know, I, 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 I could, I could have a zombie of my own. I can only think. I would say if I had my own zombie squad, but then there's like Rob Zombie. <laughs> I don't know too many others, so it's be, it might just be me and him. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. I, I think pretty much if there's a zombie apocalypse, I'm okay with dying. Uh, I'm just not really, you know, I'm not going to fight it all that much. Yeah. So you know, I just really just. My yeah. wife and uh, you know maybe a couple of my uh, my more unhinged friends just to keep <laughs> things light and entertaining until the ship goes down. Yeah, yeah, and you can be zombies together. <laughs> I, I'm all right with that. Yeah. More or less. All right. So if imagine there are now 25 hours in a day, how uh -huh. would you spend the extra hour? Reading. Ah. For Anything? all of my writing, for all of the things that I talk about, for all yeah. of my love of the written word, I don't get to read enough. Right, right. I can well, imagine. I don't read enough. Uh, get to's 
wrong because I could find the time if I wanted to. Mm. All right. So what about let's I'm just going to throw some um, options uh, your way. Just choose mm -hmm. one. Deep sea or outer space? Outer space. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> beach or mountain? Uh, beach. <laughs> Comedy or drama? Comedy. Sales or marketing? Marketing. Oh, all right. We did it. And all right. this deserves a wiggle and a dance, I would say. All right. I mean, I'm a mom of three, so you know, <laughs> I've heard okay. this many, many times. Right. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, Lee. Now, I want you to imagine that I'm holding a pair of boxing gloves uh, in my hand, which I'm going to pass them on to you via the screen. Could you mm. take these boxing gloves and smash for me, and not my face, but some kind of copywriting myth, a bogus strategy, a misconception, and set the record straight once and for all? All right. Well, let me go ahead and smack it around. The idea that content and copy are mutually exclusive is a myth. Bam, get out of here. <laughs> Yes, co content connects. Yes, copy sells. But what's content? What is content? If you look it up in the dictionary, it is what a vessel contains. Yes? Hmm. Absolutely. Okay? A social yeah. media post contains words. A sales page contains words. An email contains words. A text message contains words. And if you are a business person, the intent of all of those words must be to move your prospective buyer mm. along the path to doing business with you yes. in some meaningful way. That doesn't mean sell. I'm not telling yeah. you that every con every piece of social media content has to be buy yeah. my stuff because that you could moving people along the journey can mean educating them so they mm. understand their problem better and understand how to start, you know, start their solution, give them ways to make their lives better. Okay. Yeah. Educating them brings them in. And once you do that for them, they want more. So yeah. in a way you are moving them along that journey, growing rapport through relatable storytelling. Yeah. And I'll get I into the relatable part later. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and 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 I hope people people really take away uh, 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 what what they should take away from this is, is that what what you said, which was very important, that the idea or, or the purpose of copy is to move people from one place to another, um, from one step to the next step. And that's not necessarily sales because you don't start off with sales. You don't just send a first email or first text message saying, hey, <laughs> buy my product. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you 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 can move them along the journey too by solidifying trust. You create transparency, you walk the talk, you create social proof in your content. That makes it help them make the decision to do business with you. Yeah. Now, where I say that the, the two intersect is not only the intent but the surgical precision that's required to create the desired effect there's a there's an old saying in the marketing world they say people don't care what you say they care about how you make them feel right mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. but what you say directly impacts how you make them feel okay and that's you know not just in a, a sales letter that's meant to sell a product, but in the content that you create, you need to be precise about these things. You need to be intentional about creating uh, cues and, and tapping triggers when necessary, building trust, doing these things to move them along the journey. And Absolutely. You make sure that they have these elements. Otherwise, you're just really wasting your time and you're getting likes. And uh, as my partner uh, in another business, Alex, says you can't eat likes for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can eat likes <coughs> or hearts <laughs> right. um, or follows for breakfast. Hey, Flores. Hey, Kaleem. Right. Lovely to see you guys. Yum. Alrighty. So I'm going to start with uh, what exactly is precision market? Because that's what your LinkedIn bio says. So I would love mm -hmm. 
for people to know what is precision writing? Well, again, you're tapping into what it takes to move them along the journey in mm. the fewest words possible. We're getting so impatient as a society. And when we're scrolling through our feeds, it's, you know, uh, people say that they read posts, they don't read them, they skim mm. them. Mm. <laughs> and so, you know, with that, what happens, you have people missing huge portions of your message. And mm. so every word counts so much right now. Mm. And, you know, again, not only, uh, you know, what you're saying, but the cadence of it. Hmm. Because people read in their heads. If you if you stop to think about it, when you're reading, there's a voice in your head. Yeah. That's reading those words. And if it stumbles, then you're distracted. Hmm. Hmm. You know, so that's what I mean by the precision copy. And the other element, and I'll get into this a little bit later, is yeah. you being very precise about what they need to hear. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Instead of thinking, instead of assuming you know what they need to hear. Okay, so if uh, how, like if somebody was starting off now or they think of, uh, about writing copy, how do you write content that resonates with the audience? What is that one main thing that they have to keep in mind when, when starting off writing for a, a particular audience? Okay. First, everything you say about you and your product hmm. must be relevant to them. Hmm. Them being your, your target. Uh, mm -hmm. the person that you ultimately want to do business right. with, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've seen so many people that go off and they and they share all these, you know, awards and certifications and all these great things and I've done this and I've done that. And it's none of it is relevant to can you solve my problem? Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. Marketers and, and business owners almost always start at the wrong end. They're like, this is what I have. I'm so great. You know, you, you, you want what I have because it's so wonderful and it's so unique and it's so, you know, but that's, you're starting at the wrong end. Right. You know, right. Uh, the very, when, when I bring on a client, my onboarding question or the very first question I ask is what will your buyer's life look like after purchasing and using your product or service? Right. What ah. measurable transformation is there? Yeah. I don't stop with what are you. I don't start with who are you or what are you. What mm. are you selling? I don't start start with what is your brand. It's I don't care about that. Yeah. Right. If you're not doing something that's valuable for your target audience, yeah. then the rest of it's irrelevant. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If if they can't, if you don't start from, if you don't know where you want to take them, right. Right. Um, then uh, it's kind of a lost cause in a way. Right, um, exactly. So uh, what would you say, like, how how should one structure a persuasive copy? Where should, you know, what maybe like one tip or two tips to keep in mind to uh, to structure a persuasive copy? What, what kind of structure would they follow or should they follow? That depends on what your objective is. Uh, okay. You know, they, I'm... I'm I'm not a big fan of templates. I mean, there, right. are, it, there are times when I use more of a traditional structure of, of you call out the problem, you know, you, you call out the problem and audience, uh, you know, you, you take them to the promised land, you do all of the, the normal things, you know, where you have the, the call to actions, every other paragraph and so forth yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and then uh, you know there are times where it's more of um you know it almost seems more like uh start like telling bringing them into uh an idea something different generally you know with that you know we're, we're bringing people into a, a central idea that we can run them through uh, you know, hey, the storms are coming and times are changing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that that's a big one that I like to use because things are so turbulent in today's yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah. Right? So the structure okay. really just depends on the intent. Okay, okay. So the in, intent of the copy. Okay. So in that sense, I guess, uh, um, what should people be, or is there any difference between writing copy for emails, websites, sale pages? I mean, there's so many things you could write. 
is there a difference in writing style? What it, or what should people be looking out for? Should the objectives be different? What, from your experience, could could you talk about the, the difference between writing copy for these different in different cases? Mm -hmm. Well, generally speaking, you. Emails are going to be, well, I think more informal. Some people will disagree with me. And, you know, and here's yeah. the thing is, all of this comes down to opinion. Yeah. Uh, I see people yeah. who write very formal emails and they're very, very successful with it. Mm. Um, you know, it's, to me, it's, you know, the format is less important than what's in it. Mm. Mm. You know, because, you know, I, I always advocate that the more that you can immerse yourself in the buyer's world, mm the better it's going to be. And that translates across all the channels. Mm. So, you know, I would go, I tend to go more for consistency rather than my emails have to sound like this and my sales copy has to sound like this and my content, your social media has to, has to sound like something else. I mean, there are, there are going to be variances in tone, but it also yeah. has to have a sense of consistency throughout or you're going to lose people. So by consistency, do you mean the style of copywriting sh should be consistent? The voice. Mm -hmm. The voice. I, okay. The voice. Okay. Yeah. I so, mean, yeah, exactly. They, you, the structure will change, obviously, yeah. from one to the other. Yeah. The voice has to remain consistent. Okay. And and, and how 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 could one uh, go about finding that voice for their brand? What you know? What what are what are the things they need to be looking out for? Sure. Well. I, I tell my copywriting students that the magic happens at the intersection intersection of why you're ready to help mm. and why they're ready for you and why they're ready to change. Uh, so that takes two things. You just, I take uh, my clients through their own story of you know what made you choose this and not a billion other ways to make money. You know, mm. what really prompted this? And you know, nine times out of 10, I will get to a, a deep, meaningful story. And that, not that we have to pour our story out in the copy and share every tidbit. Mm. But, you know, once we find that core, we find that why, then we can communicate why they're ready to help. Mm. On the flip side, mm. you need to understand why the audience is ready for you and why they need you. And that's where I get into what I call avatar immersion, uh, mm -hmm. which is going into where they hang out uh, when they think you're not listening right. and just listening, observing, taking notes. How do they talk? What do they talk about? You know, right. what's, what do they talk about your competitors? You know, Amazon book reviews are fantastic yeah. for that. Mm. Uh, because if you go in and look at, at reviews, especially three-star reviews, because they'll tend to be a little more balanced and like, here's the positive, here's the negative. Yes, yes. You can pick things out about that that are influencing the buyer's yeah. life already. Yeah. And you can reflect that in your messaging to them. Yeah, absolutely. I love Amazon for that. Mm -hmm. uh, what you said to to get uh, feedback on, especially if you if, if you're starting uh, um, a new product or new service, to get feedback on what's already out there and what's working and what's not, what people are complaining about. Like you said, um, mm -hmm. uh, Quora is another one which is quite good for that, and mm -hmm. sometimes even Facebook groups. Oh, uh, I love the private ones. Actually, uh, yeah. I've got a I've got a story. Maybe I'll I'll tell a little bit later about uh, a client and something I got from a private Facebook group. But we, I don't want to derail us now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, could you share maybe two, uh, like two or most any uh, important word in blogging, persuasion, copywriting? One or two important words, um, which could do wonders for your persuasive copywriting. Hmm, just two words. Mm. You've asked some tough questions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your favorite words. Maybe your favorite two words. <laughs> oh, um, failure would be one of them because, uh, you know, today people are looking for human centered marketing, relatable marketing, and that means. You know, yeah, not that you have to spill everything out on the table, but yeah. be open and humble about, you know, your challenges, uh, your mistakes, hmm. as well as what you do right. I mean, you know, nobody wants to hear somebody talk about how they fail all the time, but hmm. then they 
they'll never celebrate their successes. Mm. You know, mm. we don't want people who are, who pretend to be perfect anymore. There's too much of that going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, and I, wow, I got to come up with a second one. Jeez. <laughs> well, relevant. Relevant is always, uh, is what I always come back to because, you know, 90% of what people put out there mm. is, ends up being useless because their target mm. market doesn't find it relevant. Mm. Mm. So what would you say uh, to, to be able to write relevant copies since you have hit on that subject now, mm -hmm. um, what, what makes a copy relevant to an audience or to a particular audience? It aligns with their basic core principles. Mm -hmm. It reflects their lives. It shows how their lives can be better in very specific ways. And it makes it simple for them to do that. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's basically, it's like being uh, in their lives, right? You know, like, like, oh, overseeing, you know, from the top, trying to understand what, what their life feels like. Mm -hmm. um, uh, living in uh, in a moment and 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 then really uh, feel it to be able to write the copy for it. What do you say is is the secret of a successful copywriter? Hey, Sunita, I see Sunita there. Go. Empathy. Empathy. Aha. Uh -huh. And how do you go about inducing empathy in your copywriting? Well, it's again, it goes back to finding out what's really going on in their lives. Hmm. You know, and, and some people can cultivate empathy and well, I don't know, others maybe to a, to a lesser degree. But, uh, you know, you the, again, the more you understand what's going on. And again, that doesn't mean feel sorry for them. It just means, you know, look, you understand that what they're going through for better or worse really isn't their fault. You know, hmm. which we tell people that all the time. Even though we're seeing, we're, as we're copywriting, we're seeing secretly thinking, well, yeah, it is your fault. Uh, but most of the time it isn't. You know, there's a hurdle that they they can't overcome and they need your help. And, you know, thank goodness that you and them, they found each other, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's, I've talked with several copywriters about this. And, yeah. and the consensus that we've had is that really if you want empathy and I'm just going to lay it out on the table is like, you need to have your ass kicked a few times, <laughs> a bunch of times, actually. Yeah. Uh, every great copywriter I know has had some serious crap go on in their life. They've been, you know, in, in their personal life, in the pits of hell. Right. And okay. survived to tell about it. So, you know, uh, forgive my floundering there for a second because that's such an easy answer because it, that that really is true. Now, I'm not saying you know go out and put yourself in peril just to get it out of the way, but you know if there's not too many of us that uh, yeah. you know get to adulthood or beyond without a whole lot of bumps and bruises, so yeah. you know yeah. those those can be um, very beneficial in mm -hmm. understanding other people's difficulties. Yeah, and tapping into how they must feel hmm. before I sit down and write an actual sales page. Yeah, uh, and just a lesser degree, other copy. Hmm. I will sit down and write a journal entry from the perspective of the buyer oh, about wow. their lives, okay. about the problem that that I want to solve as a copywriter. You know, right. I, I get so deeply into their minds that I will sit and write a journal entry from their perspective. That's after gathering a lot of information, yeah, of course. Yeah. But if, if you will discipline to yourself to do that, you will have a much better understanding of how to speak to them. Wow. And then the structure doesn't matter as much. I mean, it does, but, you know, it doesn't matter as much as the message. It's it's so uh, funny you say that because I mean uh, I, you you hear people online talking about who are teaching copywriting and all this and that uh, um, it, it is they're talking about structure 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 that's that's the main thing that they talk about you know make sure you have this on the top then 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 this uh, below it and then this 
you know, CTA over here and then testimonies mm -hmm. here and this and this, you know, which I'm sure, uh, you know, helps a bit. Sure. Um, yeah, but it's it's not the main thing um, uh, to concentrate on when it comes to copywriting. Would I be correct to say that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I can find a dozen sales pages in in 30 seconds, you know, to go to ClickBank or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can pull a structure, I can borrow a structure, you know. Yeah. You can't borrow true one-on-one -on -one insight that makes yeah. readers feel like an audience of one. You can't yeah. borrow that. Yeah. And, and that's and exactly what needs to happen. They need to feel like yeah. an audience of one. Yeah. And that starts from research, right? The first step is the Absolutely. research, research into the audience um, and, and research into the prospect or their audience. What would you say? I'm sorry, into the... Uh, the research into the prospect or the prospect's audience? Oh, Which... well, generally I'm writing for a client and I'm writing to their audience. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Both. Again, uh, you know, part of my onboarding includes two hours of Zoom sessions where I'm d diving in and asking them uncomfortable questions because yeah. I want to know what's driving them and how I can how the positioning can be unique. And yeah. spending research time, uh, as again with avatar immersion, uh, going in, finding out where they are, listening to them, and taking notes. Uh, yeah. You know, this is something 80% of my time is spent on research. Oh, wow. And 20% writing. Yeah. Wow, that's that's it's, a big one. But the time I sit down and, and pull up a Word doc, a uh, Google doc, uh, I've pretty much have it written in my head. And it's just structure at that point. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I'm sure majority of people listening and watching this, they would be like, we... You would you would spend eighty percent of the time writing, and maybe twenty percent uh, researching. So you've just flipped it around. You're saying you no, know, eighty percent research and twenty percent writing. Is, is that because your research is then so thorough that writing becomes a lot more easier? It is. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, I'm not, guys, keep in mind I've been doing this for twelve years. Okay, mm. so you know I've written thousands <laughs> of, of client pieces. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I, I, if you can't walk in and do that and, and you've written, you know, one or two sales letters, don't worry about it. You yeah. Know, if you don't yeah. start out like that, don't don't compare. In fact, like, you know, that's just generally, I think, I, advice I would give to any starting copywriter is just like, don't spend your time comparing yourself to people who say they're great. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Joseph, good to see you here as well. All right. Um, so, Lee, would you, could you, or could you explain that what is the purpose, or is is there any need for using descriptive language, or is uh, is it of importance? Is it even of importance to use descriptive language in copywriting? At times, it is when well placed. Uh, you know, I, I treat adjectives like uh, ghost peppers very, very sparingly. Okay. But they're powerful. And here's the thing. The more specific that you can get, the more you can dial into that audience of one. I mean, and there are many of those people, but it, mm. but make them feel like an audience of one. You know, it's, if I say if I say cat, you know, you, yeah. you know, it's hard to tell what you'll think of. But if I say big cat, okay, we're getting a little more specific. Big striped yes. cat, you know. Mm. And with just, with fangs and teeth and claws and bloody, th you know, hmm. <laughs> the, the more descriptive you get, the more it becomes a picture in their mind. Yeah. And more, more th moreover, it becomes the exact picture you want them to hold in their mind. Mm. But but you're saying to use it sparingly. Well, we're talking. I'm I'm not a huge fan of adjectives being right. overused. You know, like the most fantastic, wonderful, spring, thriferous, blah, 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 you know, is it in copy? It becomes meaningless real quick. Hmm. Ah, the overuse of it is something to mm. watch out for. It also trips, uh, you know, people's BS meters. I, I call it deja vu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen this poll before. 
Yes, yes, yeah. yes, that's right. You're absolutely right, actually. It, it may start to feel like that, okay, uh, you, you, you now, you're selling something in, instead of, uh, instead of uh, like feeling like a conversation and making them feel that I actually understand you, I feel you, I understand your problem, I feel your problem. Right. right. Yeah. Then you, <laughs> then you can make buying feel like their idea. Yes. It really is. I mean, it's their choice anyway. Yeah. But if when it feels like their idea, then one, you get higher, more sales, higher conversion rate. Yeah. Two, you get less of this. 30 seconds after clicking the submit button and paying. Oh, crap. What did I just do? <laughs> Buyer's remorse, right? <laughs> That's yeah. not a good way to start out a business relationship. Yeah. When yeah. you when you when when you buy, and then the copy sinks in, and you're like, "Oh, crap!" You know, <laughs> because if you don't, you know, especially when you don't deliver what you promise, and I see this again over in the you know the make money online world, yeah. which I yeah. largely distance myself from, but yeah, you know, yeah, uh, it still goes on all the time. And oh and, yes, you know, it's like every day there's more and more popping up. <laughs> it's like this, yeah. But, yeah. I actually yeah, had it. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead, Lee. Oh, sorry. I, I, I actually had somebody show up in my inbox once and they said, I'll never forget. They said, I don't want to learn copywriting skills. I don't mm -hmm. want to mess with choosing a niche. I want you want to pay you to show me a pool of buyers who are desperate and hungry for my help right now. And I said, if that didn't come out of a frigging guru's mouth, <laughs> I will eat my hat. <laughs> what on earth? Who told you this? Who told yeah. you to ask me this? <laughs> this is this is basically the result of you know gurus online telling everybody you know you can make money quickly, you can make money in the next seven days, make six you know six figures in the next seven days or next thirty days. Um, mm. So this is what happens as a result of it, that you're going around thinking, well, where, where are those hungry people? Where are those hungry people? Let me throw a bait and catch them. If they were, if they were there, why would I unleash you on them? You yeah. said you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. I'll share my private client Rolodex with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Oh yes. All right. So do you really use metaphors in your copywriting and um, do you see that there um, is there is a benefit of using metaphors in copywriting? Absolutely. You know, you by connecting with things that they're already familiar with, mm -hmm. you create that proxy connection to your idea. You know, so it's, it's it's the gated idea. I mean, you, you show mm -hmm. them what you show them something that that they're familiar with. They go, yeah, OK, I get that. Hmm. So the information that follows, they let through because the gate's already open. So, could, like, could you sh share some smart ways to use metaphors in a uh, um, in a copy to create irresistible content? Like, in how, in what way should they go about using a metaphor? Well, first, uh, I'm, first again, I'm going to throw in sparingly. <laughs> Second, it okay. uh, it's very powerful for illustrating a complex point. Because uh, here's something that we wrote, but I see over and over again in copy is that I want to tell them everything I know. Hmm. Hmm. But most of that isn't really important, you know, from, you know, I, I get this from, I'll just use tech as an example. Yes, because I yes. don't, you know, I, I'm 47. My ability to comprehend tech is quickly dwindling. <laughs> Thankfully, my business partner is 25, so he gets this stuff. But, you know, so <laughs> throwing a whole big wall of tech specs at me is not going to make me buy something because I don't care. I want to know how it simplifies my life, uh, how it, you know, makes me leave, uh, create live streams quicker, how it, yeah. uh, you know, reduces lag and the, you know, basically whatever it is, how is it relevant to me? What's in it for me? Yeah. You know, and, if you can't tell me that, then the rest of it's irrelevant. So, I mean, using using a metaphor, you know, um, now I got to come up with one on the spot. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> no, uh, okay. But I mean, I, I would like people to remember this, that uh, what you said, that you, 
you should use metaphors when trying to explain something that's very difficult to understand. Right. And, I, and I guess that makes it a lot more easier um, uh, than, than thinking about how do I actually explain this? Uh, mm -hmm. What words should I use? If it's like you said in a SaaS uh, business or tech product, you, mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, they use a lot of techie words mm -hmm. and maybe that's not the right way to go about it, but maybe by using a metaphor uh, to explain what's in it for me the, the answer to the question what's in it for me using a metaphor that's a big one actually right, um, right exactly exactly yeah. you know one that comes to my mind i mean it's not a particularly glitzy one anymore was the concept yeah. of a funnel i mean that was yeah. real that was revolutionary yeah you know uh, yeah. several years ago when you know when all this started and then of course uh you know that Russell Brunson and, and the whole yeah. click funnels thing, but that whole thing in itself was an amazing metaphor to just take this very complex system of of lead generation and yeah. in, in the sales and helping people visualize it was something that you know I would assume everybody knows what a funnel is, <laughs> you know, in, in in a practical sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know that was a great metaphor. Of course, now you know. Yeah, we yeah. Have people arguing that funnels are dead and no funnels aren't dead and funnels are equal, whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm they're not getting into that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. So, I mean, how? No, which we've talked about metaphors. What about storytelling? When do you use storytelling in a copy? When to use storytelling in a copy? Ah, uh, wow. Because I'm sure it's not appropriate in all cases, uh, or at all no. times. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, uh, you know, uh, where are, are you introducing them to yourself or are you introducing them to a concept of product? Um, you know, storytelling okay. can achieve a lot of aims. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it can build trust. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're telling your own story, then it's appropriate to start with the social media. Uh, mm -hmm. To the extent that you're comfortable, I know that I've met people who've had some very, very deeply personal stories, and they didn't, you know, understandably don't want to uh, to air every detail of it yeah, on social exactly. media. Yeah. But there are facets and examples from that that you can weave in without, you know, without sharing sensitive details. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the audience that you're trying to attack, if that sort of story resonates with them, you know. Mm -hmm. I've seen coaches that who have gone through personal trauma use their stories to as part of their messaging uh, to through social media to attract their clients because mm. the clients, you know, look, they want to they want somebody who can empathize with them, who can mm. understand what they're going through. Mm. Um, storytelling can, as I say, you know, involve metaphors and you know other other strategies to educate somebody on why they would need a product. Mm -hmm. you know, so I, you know, there are, there are times, of course, when you're going brevity is going to be of tantamount importance. You know, say uh, the email that you send out five minutes before your webinar starts. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the reason I say this is because I had a client who wanted to send out a, a story email an hour before a webinar. So the reminder email was yeah. uh, upwards of 10 paragraphs long and wow. told the story about this and that. And the other. It's like, no, that's not what you need to be doing right now. Yeah. You know, it, you know, if the, if the idea is to take action quickly, right then, yeah. then that's not the place to stop and let's, let's spin a yarn. Hmm. All right. And, and, and what, what, what was your suggestion to them to keep it brief? Well, it always, yeah, it always needs to be as concise as possible uh, with, yeah. with storytelling, uh, you know, because people are, we are pressed for time and, and we're uh, very impatient. Yeah. And it can be very easy for us to drift off to something else that catches our attention. I mean, we have this distraction machine with mm -hmm. us all the time, yes. that pings and beeps and buzzes and whatever. Yeah. And, you know, even if your story is really, really good, if it's too long in the wrong place, then, you know, it's not going to work. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I play over on LinkedIn quite a bit and yeah. I've gotten away from longer articles because just people don't read them. Yeah. Whereas I can take the same thing and put it over on medium and yeah. get, That's get a, a long much better point. response. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, be cognizant of your space and where your people's, you know, where your people's heads are at. 
when they're yeah. there. I know that's atrocious English, but I grew up in Southern Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so be yeah. So content is uh, or, or let's say copywriting. Uh, what you're saying, uh, you, it may you have to know not only that who you're writing for, but where is it going to go? Like um, where um, mm. where is it going to be published? So what platform you're using? So that they all have different styles, and uh, and I guess the lengths. Like what you spoke about, the LinkedIn short articles seem to be working better, whereas in Medium, people prefer to read long form articles and and would spend time reading those articles um, mm -hmm. to move from uh, uh, to move forward from one space to another. Right, right. right. Yeah, there's yeah. the intent can be very different even for the same person, mm -hmm. uh, and that's something to be keep keep be mindful of across platforms because. When people are on LinkedIn, they're in a different frame of mind than when they are when they're on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and on a different in a different mindset on Pinterest and Instagram and I, I, TikTok. I haven't really explored that yet. <laughs> you know, I'm too old for yeah. TikTok. No, oh yeah, I'm not on TikTok either. I don't, don't think I will be getting on there. But a lot of people have been talking about Twitch, so I don't I don't know. Maybe you know, uh, <laughs> because we're already doing videos, so that might be the next thing. But um, what have you noticed uh, as you're active on LinkedIn? Um, what seems to work to grab the, uh, from co copywriting point of view, to grab and keep the attention as people are scrolling through their LinkedIn feed? Mm. From copywriting okay. point of view. Right. Um, if your intent is to attract new followers, mm. then curiosity is a huge driver and you you can do a lot of neat things with that uh because they will generally only see the first three lines three or four lines of your yeah. uh, of your text yeah and so i position those things and i've seen a lot of other people that will strategically position uh copy you know and content so that you can only see so much before you uh click see more Mm -hmm. And then you start to get into the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, so curiosity-driven headline. I, yeah, I love the curiosity-driven headline, and I usually write headlines last. Ah, this okay. is probably opposite of what anybody else in the world will tell you, and I don't know if you should do it or not. It's just what right. works for me. Yeah, because the body informs the headline. Mm. Again, nine times out of ten, after I'm done with it, I know yeah. what the, the headline just goes. Oh, okay, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. And there you go. Uh, so because, you write the copy first, and yeah. and and then you uh, you ponder over the headline. Yeah, it, it's it, it's hard to create curiosity curiosity driven headlines when you don't know where you're quite where you're taking them yet. True, true, true. I mean, do you, do you have any example in mind? Maybe something you've written for a client or yourself of a headline, curiosity-driven headline? You know, um, one of my favorites was, my headlines was, uh, that I can think of in recent memory was tighter than a frog's butt. <laughs> okay. And, what and that's watertight. <laughs> And then I went on to explain how busy people's schedules were so tight that blah, 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 blah. I forget what the whole yeah. thing was about. All right. Yeah. And, and honestly, um, I stole that. <laughs> I was yeah. a, we was on a bus back from a casino, and, and I heard some old fart say that. And <laughs> I just giggled, and it just stuck with me. And so I, uh, I, I, I misappropriated it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, to to the old guy, if you're still around and you know, haven't, if the Paul Malls haven't taken you yet, you know, God bless you. Thank you for the uh, phrase. <laughs> you know, um, it's it's pretty clever how you uh, could um, sort of wean in that <laughs> tighter uh, than a frog's butt to 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 how people are busy in their lives. Uh, and the schedules are tied. And so uh, I, I I see how you, what you what you mean by curiosity driven that the 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 headline may not really totally give away what the what this um, the content piece is going to be about. Is that the idea? Well, that's right. 
you know, yeah. because you give them just enough to catch That's their it. attention and leave them waiting in anticipation. Yeah, anticipation of what's Patient. to come. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Should you use analogies in copy? Uh, this is pretty much falls under the metaphor discussion, okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I all of the same things would I think would apply to that. And and both uh, should be used sparingly? I do. Yeah. I mean it's anything in huge repetition is going to turn people off. Now you do have to repeat certain things. Uh mm -hmm. you know the call there's certain things that calls to action obviously you'll have two or three generally on a page. Uh but those are strategically placed uh because people are in different mindsets at different parts of the page. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, not all call to actions are even designed to like really drive sales. Sometimes people, it's sometimes it's just there to let people know that yes, there's an offer here and no, we're not trying to snow you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but at any rate, yeah, sparingly is, is important because if you're overdoing it, then it starts to seem clownish and forced and overzealous and salesy and then people yeah. go okay bye yeah yeah okay and so i let, let's take um because there's copywriting for so many uh things like copywriting for emails and sales pages let's let's take a um, website for example could you share maybe one two or three main mistakes one should avoid when writing copy for their website uh. Okay, so the first thing is not using this above the fold space to its full use. Your headline, your subheadline, the imagery needs to give them enough information to know that it's for them mm -hmm. and they should read on. Okay, so it's for okay. them. Okay. Right. Okay. You know, as so many times. I'll, I'll land on website home pages or sales pages where I'm just like, I don't know what this is, what it's for. Uh, keep you, can't relate. Hmm? you can't relate to it. Right. It, it's like, you know, if I don't know if this is for me or not, confused yeah. minds always say no. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. So, so making sure that you're talking to the right person that they know that they should be they're the ones that should be listening yeah okay so okay. that's above the fold above the fold also yeah. your above the fold text needs to be a little as possible brevity really counts here okay. you have your headline has a ton of lifting to do because not only does it have to tell the people the right people yes this is for you and yes you should read on yeah but it has to do it in as few words as possible. You got about three seconds. Yes. After, well, after so after your page loads, you got about three seconds before, before you get a yes or no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it's easy for it's easy for us to get caught up on how great our products and services are, but at any time you are one click away from disappearing from a potential client or customer's world forever. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So. Uh, I, I uh, do the same thing is with social media copy headline is last mm -hmm. for me, always, always, always uh, to make sure that it's it accurately reflects what's next. Because even if you reel them in, even if you have a fantastic headline, mm -hmm. if you don't follow through with the rest of the copy, that mm -hmm. means answering their questions, mm -hmm. guiding them to overcome their own objections mm. Mm. and making a buying decision theirs yeah and okay. making if you don't follow through with that the headlines meaningless yeah uh, and basically answering the question what's in it for me right uh as well right all right okay um lee what should i ask you that i didn't know enough to ask what could you share with the audience that I didn't know enough to ask you about? <laughs> it could be oh, anything. Yeah. Know, personal, in business life, person life, client life. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, 
one of a saying that I live by, my dad said this quite often was don't take life too seriously. Mm -hmm. It's not permanent. Mm -hmm. And it stuck with me. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a religious person, but I'm definitely a, a follower of Taoist uh, thought. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that, uh has more than anything has allowed me to uh to flourish to get the get what i want out of life um because trying to force it just doesn't work hmm. Hmm. um i you know if i can how, how much time we have we got a few minutes left okay um yeah. so uh Quick story. Um, yeah. I, my wife and I had a daughter. Mm. Uh, she, uh, her name was Aria. And she had uh, some significant life threatening illness um, her entire life. And uh, she passed away in 2013, uh, at just after her 10th birthday. Yeah, and, I read that about that. Yeah. So, well, that's, um, you know, that was, that was ground zero. Yeah. For me and kinda, it was um it made me rethink absolutely everything hmm. and so you know those pa the past seven and a half going on eight years hmm. um you know after i went through rampant alcoholism and all that stuff hmm. uh came to a place where i had to learn non-attachment hmm. because there's very little in life that you can really control and the one thing that you can control, mm. most people don't, and that's your own inner state. Mm. But mm. Uh, it sometimes it takes for you know for me it took uh, a tragedy like that to wake up mm. and realize that mm. I was putting my energy in the wrong places, and you know, and in what other people were doing, and what other mm. people were, how they were getting in my way, how they mm. were wronging me. Mm. Mm. And put it, it, and put the responsibility back to myself. What can I do to change the situation, mm. even if it means just being at peace mm. with what's mm. happening? Because you can't do anything about it. Mm. Well, uh, I mean, I, I can't even imagine uh, what you went through. But uh, from what I can see, is that uh, that you you've you know, it, it, it sort of changed the course of life for you uh, for better. And now, as we can see, and 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 now you're living a higher purpose, uh, as you can say. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and that's. I mean, uh, I'm I'm sure maybe a lot of people who probably know about uh, you know, it, it, you know, we know in business we know each other through you know he, he's he's a, he or she is a marketer, he's a copywriter, he's a designer, and and sometimes we forget about that we all have our own stories. Um, uh, and we all have our own baggage to carry, and 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 that's what really makes us human. That's what makes us connect, and not the fact that somebody else is a great marketer, a great designer, or, or, or a great coder, or whatever. All right, Lee. Sadly, we're coming up towards the end of this groovy chat. So okay. before I ask you to share a challenge with our viewers and listeners, I would like to ask you a hypothetical question. If you had a hundred million pounds or dollars to spend on making a meaningful impact in the world, how would you spend it? <laughs> really? Okay. Um... It could be any amount of money. It's hypothetical. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, you I, like I think I would. I, I think I would spend it helping people understand that we're not different. Hmm. Fundamentally different because we're divided. Each of us thinks that we're this. You know separate entity we we belong between these ears and i'm me and i'm not you and you know if you disagree with me we can't have that mm. but you know honestly it, it would be you know, educating people to be mm. you know 
less prideful, to be less egotistic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I to understand that really we're all in this together. Hmm. Hmm. Absolutely. And we can only move forward together um, instead of, you know, uh, by creating differences, you're absolutely right. We just pull each other down. Um, and whereas finding the common between us is what helps us grow together and help each other rise together. So I love that of that. All right. So lastly, it's that time of the interview for us. And you may be thinking, what is it? Gossip time or share fun pickup lines time? or tell an embarrassing joke time. But unfortunately, we are not that type of a show yet. But what it is time for is... The 48 hour challenge time. So Lee, this is where I ask you to share, what is that one thing that our viewers and listeners can implement in the next 48 hours that doesn't require a team or a massive budget? Easy. Go do the immersion work. Go find out, you know, and of course I'm talking to, to entrepreneurs, business owners, copywriters here. Hmm. Go find out where the buyers are. Spend time listening to them. I had to tell you real quick that, that we did this, the first time we did this with Facebook at a, uh, at a, a buyer client who was selling a rheumatoid arthritis regimen, right. blah, blah, blah. And so all the competitors were talking about two things, joint pain and fatigue, joint pain and fatigue. Hmm. I got into a private rheumatoid arthritis sufferers group. And after a few days of just monitoring, uh, a lady posted about how she was fighting more with her husband. Hmm. And it was because he couldn't sleep in the bed at night because she was tossing and turning from the aches and pains and da 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 Hmm. He was having to sleep on the couch, making him ache and so forth and so on. So he's grouchy, she's grouchy, they're fighting. We referenced that in one line of the copy. Hmm. And this was a this was a refresh. And we ended up getting over 70% improvement. I mean, you know, and of course that wasn't the only factor, but hmm. that line stuck hmm. out. And when we heat mapped it, that was something that people hung on because they were just like, how did how does somebody know this? Hmm. Wow. I, you know, they get me now take hmm. my money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's how important this immersion work is because you can find these little gold nuggets and it is like painting for gold. Yeah. But if you consistently do it 30 minutes a day, if you're hmm. working, you know, until, you know, and still, you know, periodically I'll do it for existing clients just hmm. to make sure I'm on top of things, but doing that work and listening, it's going to be critical to creating messaging that attracts them to you and not one of your Brazilian competitors. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I know we can probably go on talking about <laughs> this subject for hours and hours, but you know, uh, I have to be respectful of Lee's time as well. So for all those watching us live today, I heart you. I really do. The lives wouldn't be fun without your support. And um, uh, before everyone uh, leaves, I would like to let you know that tomorrow we'll be back here with uh, another live. Um, let me see. No. Okay. It doesn't work. Okay. Um, no, you cannot see. <laughs> I thought you might be able to see the screen, but it, nope, no. Nope. Anyway, um, tomorrow I'm here live uh, at 4 p.m. GMT. Um, I think it's 10 a.m. CST. Um, I'll be back here with um, uh, Claude Silver of, of Wayno Media. Uh, and it's going to be an unplugged, unruly, and unrestrained live session. So don't forget to join us again. Lastly, for more bite sized takeaways um, of these conversations, um, you can uh, find us, you'll find me uh, on YouTube, uh, bit.ly spreading ideas with Amber Khan. Um, and the link for which you can see on the screen. And as for Lee, um, you can find Lee. Um, Lee, would that be correct to find you? If people wanted to find you, they could go to your website. That's me. And they could check you out on LinkedIn as well. Yes. And would I be correct to say that's your hashtag bow tie up? Bow tie up, baby. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to check content, content out from uh, Lee, uh, you, you hashtag bow tie up from myself, Amber Glow. 
All right, that's it. Now, we had a fantabulous, we've, we've already covered that. Now, thank you for joining us today, Lee. And thank you. You're fabulous. I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, take care. Bye bye.